Welcome back. My name is Paul Fritz and I am going to show you how to get our character who we've been working on a run cycle to move across the screen. This is video number five and our last video for this run cycle series. And I'm going to go ahead and get started now. Right here we have our character. We should have just finished cleaning up our run cycle animation. And as you can see, she's just sitting there running in place. If I turn the little grid on here, you can see she's not really moving anywhere. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually get her to move. And then we're going to put a camera in the scene that will move along with her so that we can actually see her run for the um, complete number of frames that we set it up for. Okay, so what we want to do is I'm going to bring the control layer back so it's visible. And right here you can see the control layer. And I am going to just go ahead and well, I think I'll move this over to the side a little bit so we can see a little bit more of what's happening here. And what I want to do is I want to do a couple things. I want to measure the distance of my person's step. And I also want to keyframe those onto the control, the main control layer here for my character. And that is this circle that's around the base of our character. If I go to perspective, you can see that this is actually a circle. In the side view or the front view, it looks like a line down here at the base of her feet. So we're going to go ahead and use that to move our character this time around. Unlike the walk cycle where we showed you how to do a progressive walk and then take that progressive walk and get it to move, we're not going to do a progressive walk this time. Okay, so go ahead and select this layer right here, the control around the foot of our character. And if you have any keyframes down here in the bottom along this base here, after you select that, what we want to do is we want to double click into there, right click, and then hit delete. We're going to get rid of any of the keyframes that you may have keyframed onto just this control. And that could have happened when you did any marquee selecting like this. If you were selecting and then setting keyframes for the rest of the controller, you may have uh, also added some keyframes on this part of the control for our character. Okay, so once you have that done, the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out roughly how far the distance of a step is for our character. And we want to go ahead and then keyframe that into our layer down here. Okay, and then the next thing we'll do is we'll set some controls uh, on our curves. Uh, so we'll set our curves up and get everything moving. So first things first, let's go ahead and put her back into uh, orthographic side view. And right here in frame six, that is about the furthest distance of my step as we start to come down. Now this isn't going to be 100% accurate for the length of her stride, but it's, it's pretty close. It'll be close enough to, to get for us to get started with. Uh, we could just guess on it and we could move the control and go from there and just adjust it as we went along. But I think um, having something to start with, a kind of an estimate or a guess, is a little bit better than just um, shooting completely in the dark. So what I'm going to do is, using my middle mouse button and my alt button, I'm going to push down and I get my pan button. And I'm going to put her foot right over the top of this, but I still want to be able to see the control down at the bottom. And my heel of my runner right here is going to be over this X. And so I'm going to move it just a little bit more over, just like that. I'm going to hit W on my keyboard to bring up my movement here. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to move my character so that I'm at about the distance, the furthest distance on her back foot here. And what should happen is over here in my translate Z, as I move and slide this along, we should start to see some numbers in the translate Z. So as I do that, I'm going to then move my foot so that it's just a little bit over the X like that, lined up. And again, this is just going to be something that's kind of a close estimate. And right here, I have a negative 87.7. Again, this is an estimate. So I'm going to use 88 as my one stride length. So 88, negative 88. But I'm not going to worry about the negative at this point. We will use it, but uh, we're not going to uh, worry about that. So that's one stride. And what this timeline here is, is 13 frames, is actually going to give us 
Go ahead and double click on this down here. What this is actually going to do is just going to give us two steps. So we have one step here at six and then a second step at 13 roughly. So this is going to give us two steps. We're going to take that 88 and we're going to multiply it by two. So that's 176 for mine. So I'm going to use a negative 176. Okay. I'm going to hit Control Z a couple of times. Put my character back so that my translate Z, and you can also just come up here and put a zero in here. Put my character back at the origin point. Put my timeline at number one. With this selected, I'm going to hit S on my keyboard. Make sure I turn on my auto key down here. And I'm going to move this back up to 13. Make sure this timeline is at full 13 down here so I can see all of my, my uh, frames down here. I'm going to go to 13. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in 176. Um, I'm sorry. Not what I wanted to do. Up here, I'm going to go ahead and put in 176. I'm going to select the translate Z. 176. Got a negative 176 because we want to go in that negative direction. And that will pull my character basically two strides forward. So now if I go back to frame one and I hit play, my character should take two steps forward. So we've got our moving. I hit stop. Now what we've got to do is we want to make it so that our character actually can be set up to move any number of frames that we put down here because right now she's just going to do go to frame 13 and then stop. And we want her to continue moving. So I'm going to go back to frame one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again marquee select my character or if you followed along with me down here I have my character set Sophie and I'm going to go to all. So either one of those methods will work. I am going to set my Sophie all down here. So I have all of my keyframes except for do not select this bottom control down here. We don't want to select the main control. We just want to select all of these other controls that are part of Sophie. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and marquee select just as an example to show you here as well. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to come over here to curves. And I'm going to go to pre-infinity. And this time I only want cycle. We're not going to do what we did with the walk cycle. We were only going to, we're going to do something a little bit different. So I want pre-infinity cycle with all of those controls selected. And now I'm going to go ahead and go to my curves and go to post infinity. And again, cycle, only cycle, not cycle with offset. And we don't see anything down here because we also need to go to view and down here to infinity and turn that on. And now we can see that we have all of these curves before and move this out of the way after all of our uh, keyframes here in 13. So everything we keyframes. All right, get that back out of the way. Now, if I hit play, basically what's going to happen is her arms and legs will continue moving for as many frames as I want, but she will stop at frame 13. She won't move. And we can go ahead and see what that looks like. So down here in the timeline, I'm going to hit 300. I'm going to hit enter. That'll bump out my timeline here, as you can see. And if I hit play, she's going to move two steps forward. And for 300 frames, we'll run in place. Not what we want. We want to go ahead and get her to move. But we can also use that same method for our timeline here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And as we can see, we have our translate Z here. If I hit click on translate Z, we have this S curve. That is again an ease in and ease out. Since she's already running as we started this video, we want to go ahead and click right here on our linear tangent button and make it so that this line is straight. And it is a downward because she is moving in a negative direction to the right here. So we'll have a downward slope. If she was turning around running this direction the other way, it would be a positive slope. So the slope would go upwards. Okay, so now we have that done. We're going to now select again the curve down here, the control down here. Go back up to curves, pre-infinity. This time we want cycle with offset. And we're going to go to curves again. And we're going to go to post-infinity, cycle with offset. Now, zoom out a little ways. If I hit play, she's going to continue running right off the screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. Hit rewind. I'm going to turn off my control there and go to my perspective view. Zoom out a little ways. And we can hit play again 
and we'll see that she's going to continue to run right off the screen. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a camera in so that we can kind of have our camera move along with our character so that we can do a play blast or maybe some other type of video recording if you wanted to. Let me move this back over a little bit, change my back view here, panels, and I'm going to go to orthographic top. And I can see that uh, this is Sophie right here. She's here in our origin point. If I turn my grid back on, that'll help. Try that again. There we go. Grid, zoom out a little bit. And I have my camera going out to 300. We could do a couple different things. It could set it up so that the camera uh, is similar to the way we have Sophie set up so that it will move for as long as the number of keyframes we have here. But I'm just going to do a simple uh, camera for 300 frames instead because we may not keep this camera when we put the, this character into a scene. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come in here and I want to create a path for our camera to follow along. Up here on the top where our curves and surfaces tab, click on that. And I want to select the EP curve tool, which is this one right there, the very first one. And now you see that my mouse is this little X. I'm going to hit my end line down here to put Sophie all the way out at the furthest distance so I know where to go from. So I'm going to start here at my first point here, and I'm going to go all the way up to this distance right here. So I'm going to click off to the side because I want that camera to be moving along the side of Sophie, not along with her. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go all the way up to the very end up here, and I'm going to select here, and there we go. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Okay, and then I'm going to hit enter. And now my line is very kind of angular, so what I want to do is I want to grab it and push it back just a little bit. So I'm going to right click, go to my control vertices, and I have a few uh, controls that were added here. I'm going to push these out just a little bit, select one, grab it, kind of straighten that out, next one up, straighten out a little bit, and do the same with the top one. Okay, that ought to be pretty good. Now I'm going to right click, go back to my object mode, click off the line and select the line. And over here in my side view, I can see that the line is on the ground. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up just a little bit and stick it so that it's running kind of sideways right in the middle of where Sophie's at. So you can see right there. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a camera. I'm going to come up here to create, go to cameras, and we're going to just put a simple camera in the scene. R on my keyboard and make the camera a little bit bigger so I can kind of see what I'm doing with it. There's the camera. If I hit Q, you can see it right there. And I'm going to hold shift. The camera is selected. It's green. So I'm going to hold shift and select this line right here that we created. Now the camera turns white and the line is green and that's the order we want to make sure we do this in. I'm going to go to constrain, I'm going to go to motion paths and here's the option box. We're not going to change anything but again we have several options on how we want to set up our timeline. I'm just going to use whatever time is on our time slider. There's going to, we could change it to a start, we could also do a start and end. I want it to follow why my Y axis is going to be the up axis in this case and my front axis is going to be the X direction. So it's gonna be in the direction that Sophie is from this line. And we're not gonna change anything else. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit attach. And now my camera should be looking at Sophie. But down here with the camera selected still, you can see that this also is an ease in and ease out. If we left it that way, what would happen would be if the camera would fall behind, Sophie would take off, and then the camera would quickly catch up because it would be going faster and then it would move alongside her for a little while, and then she would, again, um, continue to run away from the camera as the camera came to a slow down. We want the camera to also move at a constant rate, so we're gonna click on the linear tangent and change that. Now, if I go into my panels here, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna hit my spacebar and my perspective. I'm gonna go to my panels, and I'm gonna select camera one. We just created that, and we can see that there is Sophie. 
Now we're looking kind of right at the middle of her. What we want to do is we want to fix the camera here under our attributes editor. So I'm going to select my attribute editor. Doesn't seem that the camera is selected anymore. So I'm going to go to outliner, select the camera, camera one in this case, close my outliner because that's going to change the way the camera is looking at Sophie. I can push my timeline down a little bit too. That'll help some. Now I'm going to change my angle of view here on the attribute editor for my camera. I'm going to slide it to the right. This will move the camera away from Sophie and something like that. You, you know, can do whatever you want, but this is the image I want. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Go all the way back to the very beginning. And now I'm going to hit play. And there is Sophie. She's running away. And I don't seem to have too much foot sliding happening. I'm okay with that. And I think that's probably about it. Last thing I want to show you is doing a play blast. Play blast is just a really simple, low quality video. We can change the quality of it, but it's not going to get a lot better. I have the control layer turned off over here, so we won't see that. I could also turn off some other things here in my show, but I um, think I am going to, let me see, we could turn off our nerve curves, which would probably get rid of, I don't need that up right now. Get rid of our camera line, so we won't see the camera line in our scene either, so we could get rid of that. Go ahead and hit start, rewind again. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click here and I'm going to go to the bottom down here where it says play blast. Hit the little option box right here where it says save to file. I'm going to click that little check box and it's going to save if I looked in here, it's going to go into my movies right here. And that's where I want it to go. That's my project folder. If I went upwards a little bit, you can see here's my project folder and anything that we make for the movie. So in this case, an ABI from the play blast is going to go into this. Go ahead and give us a name and save it. And it's going to be an ABI. That's the format I want it to be in. No encoding. I'm going to bump the quality up all the way to hundred percent. It's not going to be significantly improved, but it'll be better than it was. Leave everything else default and I'm going to click on play blast. It is going to take the 300 frames worth of time and play blast it. There we go. And this is the play blast that we're going to see. All right. So there we have a quick little simple video without rendering of our Sophie running. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching this run cycle series and please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.